The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER for short, was supposed to be the world's first nuclear fusion machine to generate net energy. But just last week, the project's leadership announced another delay and another price hike. Let's have a look at what happened and what that means for the future of nuclear fusion. ITER is the biggest international nuclear fusion project currently underway. It uses a tokamak design and construction has been underway in Cadarache, France since 2010. The tokamak is huge. It's about 10 meters wide and 11 meters high. That's a height of approximately six elephants if you stack them on top of each other, which is also a good illustration for the difficulty of pulling off this project. ITER's goal is to produce net energy in the reactor vessel, though if one takes into account the entire energy necessary to operate the reactor, ITER will still not produce net power. The main purpose of the machine is not to put power into the grid, but to collect data and to better understand how tokamaks work. Or at least that was the plan. I've always liked the idea that the world would come together on this mega project to save the planet basically, but in reality as so often it didn't go according to plan. The first plasma run in the ITER vessel was originally scheduled for 2018, but in 2016 the ITER council pushed it back to 2025. The project cost was originally estimated with 5 billion euros, but by 2020 it had risen to more than 20 billion euros. Where does the money come from? Like the Large Hadron Collider, ITER is located in Europe, but it's an international project at heart. About half of its funding comes from European countries, the rest from China, India, Japan, South Korea, Russia and the United States. So chances are your taxes went into it too. In 2020, COVID put construction at a pause and just when it resumed, engineers found cracks in some of the already installed parts of the vessel. Unfortunately, these were indicative of a deeper problem, which was that some of the components, which are produced by different companies, didn't properly fit together. This creates stress in parts where there shouldn't be stress, causing helium leaks, corrosion and eventually cracks. Fixing this problem would mean taking some already installed elements apart again and reordering them an engineer's nightmare. Since this news broke, it was clear that ITER would face further delays, but we didn't know until now how long it would be. At a press conference two weeks ago, the new ITER director Pietro Barabashi announced that the first plasma run would be delayed from 2025 until 2034, that's a full nine years. He also said that the cost would increase by a stunning 5 billion euros. Imagine having a job where you get five billion dollars for being nine years late. However, it isn't as bad as it sounds because originally there was supposed to be a quite long pause between the first plasma run and the deuterium tritium fusion, which is the main project goal. The latter has been shifted from 2035 to 2039, which is merely four years. So they've delayed the start of operation, but then shortened the research phase. Still, it's yet another delay and it's a crucial one because it puts the purpose of the entire project at question. You see, ITER was supposed to deliver data to inform other fusion projects, in no small part to encourage private investments to commercialize the technology. Now it looks like private companies are likely to pull ahead, which makes ITER kind of pointless. Is it still worth the money? I've so far been very supportive of ITER because while it's a high cost project, it also has a high potential payoff. Now I'm not so sure, if not others will just get there faster, reducing the payoff to essentially zero. I've in the past years followed nuclear fusion startups very closely and at the moment I'd put my bet either on stellarators or inertial confinement to be the first to get nuclear fusion power into the grid. Stellarators are basically smaller, more efficient types of tokamaks. Inertial confinement means that you shoot at a fuel pellet to make it first implode and then explode. 
episode. I went through all the different types of nuclear fusion machines and their pros and cons in an earlier video. Then again, maybe those startups will all fail. There's also the issue that private companies tend to be secretive with their data, so maybe a project like ITER is still needed. The ITER project will continue anyway, I'm sure, but at this point one has to ask whether it's not just throwing good money after bad. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.